Hey there, Commanders. This week's community goal is a triple threat. We have one combat, or I should say, conflict zone CG, and then a continuation of the Colonia Bridge CG from last week. The systems that are being targeted have not changed. It's still Colonia and Alcor. I would assume the pattern here is going to continue, so if you've got trade resources in those systems, Leaving them in place probably isn't too bad of an idea, assuming you've got whatever materials it is that you need in order to service them. Once again, the tiers are not that tall. We're looking at probably being able to polish this thing off before the goal ends without too much trouble. The reward is, once again, bolstering infrastructure. If you're doing either of the two trade CGs, the only thing that you're going to get are the credit rewards affiliated with turning in your uh, combat bond credits. Now, the Empire goal is kind of interesting. Um, of course, I say that every week about every goal, because why wouldn't I? Uh, this, has some interest, this has some lore implications that I think are going to play out in the negative for the Empire long term. Um, however, this particular CG will play out to the benefit of the player base in the short term. We're going to have economic benefits, a permanent 10% discount on Imperial ships available at Henry O'Hare's hangar, this is the main station in the system, with additional temporary discounts possible depending on which tier is reached, up to 30%. This could be a really big deal if you've yet to acquire your cutter. And if you're not big on the Imperial rank grind, this is also an excellent opportunity to be able to skip a pretty fair chunk of it since... Participants in this goal who reach the top 75% will be elevated to the rank of Master in the Imperial Naval Auxiliary. Saves you a lot of hours compared to climbing the rank tier manually, since there's some RNG involved. The top 25% of participants will additionally receive a permanent permit for the Summerlin system, as well as the Imperial Combat Zone decal, which is basically just a sticker if you aren't familiar with the library system. I'm not all that impressed with the livery in general. The stickers are kind of, aside from a few achievement-related stickers, these aren't that significant. And the, uh, let's see. Oh, um, top 75% also get a power play decal, which you can earn through just being part of the power play system. So this special Imperial Combat Zone decal is going to be something unique. It'll be like the bounty hunting decals that got handed out last year. I don't think they've handed them out again. So this might be something if you're looking to wear some type of a badge of honor. I have my, uh, I, have, I have a couple of these that I, I think are significant enough to wear. Triple Elite is something that people definitely know about. The Distant Worlds 2 decals, people tend to wear those when they have them. Uh, everything else is well, Fuel Rats too, actually. They've got their own special decal as well. Most of the rest of the decals in Power Play and across the game are kind of eh. Um, in most situations, especially in multiplayer, you're not going to get close enough to another ship to really see these stickers anyway. So, you know, just dealer's choice on that one. Now, the most interesting reward is that the top 10 players will be granted an Imperial Hammer for their service. Just one. Um, let's see. I'm not sure why it says Imperial Hammer. I guess this is just reflecting the top, whatever the top 10 commanders are in each instance. So, uh, the thing about the Imperial Hammer though is for the amount of effort you would have to expend to reach top 10, I don't think that this module is worth it because you can get it normally through power play. All you have to do is sign up for, uh, the Emperor's faction, and then wait four weeks, and then turn in two Type 9s full of whatever the power play material is she hands out, and you can get as many Imperial Hammers as you want. I've probably still got another six of these in my storage that I've just picked up after doing that section of power play. I think in terms of guarantee for work that just using a normal power play route is, is a better option than trying to go for top 10 because it's so highly competitive in a typical community goal. It's just, it's a bobble that isn't worth the effort. We'll put it that way. The, the top 10 commanders are 
usually pretty well established by the third or fourth day of a CG. So by the time you hit the end of Saturday tomorrow, they'll be far enough ahead that the real battle is really, it's just going to be for the, the bottom five of the top ten. So I don't think you should try to kill yourself going out to get these, especially since the Imperial Hammer is highly PvP-focused. Um, it is extremely useful in those situations. Depending on who you talk to, there's a little bit of argument whether or not it's better to have one shot or three. Um, it is still a railgun, though, and so it is still a very powerful weapon to use in PvP situations being that it's a lot more forgiving on the trigger, you have more opportunities to strike hits. So I'll, I'll let the PvPers fight it out over which one is better. Um, I like the Imperial Hammer as a concept. I think that it is definitely worth trying to acquire, just not here, not in this way. The economic discount's the more significant thing here if you don't have any Imperial ships, and that you really don't have to participate at all in to get some level of benefit out of everything else here is just kind of cool especially if you're an older player um, if you're new though definitely um, put up the effort to get top 75 and save yourself a couple of hours of hard effort in order to get where you need to be um, if you've already got these rewards though if you're already above the rank of master then eh, you could probably give this a pass and be okay the Lore-wise, I don't know where the Empire is going with this whole I'm going to overcompensate for being stuck in the freezer for a year deal that the Empress has got going on. It's going to burn out all of the goodwill lore-wise. I would be concerned that the Empire is trending tyrannical. From a plot perspective, though, they do still have the Alliance and the Federation to check their power, so I guess we'll see how that plays out over time. And the Thargoid War appears to be cooling off. Maybe a sign of things to come? I don't know. I thought that we were going to ramp up the effort. I made a prediction in last week's video that the Thargoids were going to continue to escalate tensions and that at some point Salvation would be presented with the opportunity to save everybody in line with his name. I don't think that's where we're going, so I'll own the possibility of being wrong here. Anyway, um, let's see. I don't think there's any other significant stuff packed in here, so I'll catch you guys later.